Hello friends, today we will conduct an overview of a crucial journey for internationally trained electrical engineers in the United States. And that journey is the path to becoming a professional engineer or PE. Engineering is a regulated profession in the US, just like medicine, law, accounting, nursing, and many others. In order to become a licensed professional engineer, you have to meet several requirements, such as academic experience, reference, examinations, security clearances, and so on. This is similar to what lawyers, doctors, nurses, accountants, and other professionals have to go through in order to get recognized as professions in their chosen fields. In the United States, a PE license is more than just a credential. It's a symbol of expertise, competency, and trust. If you're an internationally trained engineer or a graduate from a U.S. college, typically the first step in your licensing process is the FE exam. The FE exam stands for Fundamentals of Engineering Exam. It is a comprehensive test that assesses your foundational engineering knowledge. The FE exam consists of 110 questions that practically cover entire undergraduate engineering coursework. Most of the electrical engineers with background or specialization in power, controls, instrumentation, computer, telecom, and software take the FE electrical and computer exam. This exam is divided into 17 sections, which include a wide range of general, electrical, and computer topics. Some of the general topics include mathematics, probability, statistics, ethics, safety, engineering economics. These topics are found right up front in the exam specification, and that is basically the order that you will be tested on the actual exam. Some of the topics in electrical category include properties of electrical materials, circuits, linear systems, power systems, and electromagnetics. Some of the topics in the computer category include computer systems, digital systems, computer networks, and software. Typically, students who don't have a background in computers, a lot of students basically taking the FE electrical and computer exam come from power systems background. They have the option to skip computer sections in their undergraduate coursework. Typically, they do. Additionally, there are some other topics that fall under the category of miscellaneous, or you can call them overlap of electrical and computer engineering, such as controls, linear systems, signal processing, communications, and so on. The key point over here is that you have to review pretty much your entire undergraduate coursework for an exam that spans five hours and 20 minutes and gives you approximately three minutes per question to answer 110 questions. Now, once you pass the FE electrical and computer exam, basically you're halfway through the examination requirements because the next exam is the PE exam. Most of the folks who are taking the FE electrical exam tend to take PE power exam. So you only have to take two exams in order to get licensed in the US while meeting other requirements, obviously. The power exam is similar to the FE exam in the sense that it is also a closed book computer-based exam just like the FE exam. You will be provided references on the exam in the form of PDFs just like the FE electrical and computer exam. But there are some major differences between these two exams. The first difference is that the PE power exam contains 80 questions versus 110 questions for the FE electrical and computer exam. The second difference is that the PE power exam is eight hours long as compared to five hours and 20 minutes that you get for the FE electrical and computer exam. And what this means is that for each problem on the PE power exam, you get approximately six minutes, actually exactly six minutes per question as compared to approximately three minutes per question for the FE electrical and computer exam. The third and probably the most important difference between P power and F electrical is that the P power exam tests you on your depth of understanding as compared to the breadth of understanding that is expected on the F electrical exam. Obviously, the more you know on the F electrical exam from first principles, the in-depth concepts, the theory, the more comfortable you are going to be on the exam. But when it comes to the P power exam, in my opinion, there's no way that one can pass the exam comfortably with shaky concepts, shaky fundamentals, you really need to get into the depth of every single concept in order to pass the exam comfortably. And the fourth difference is that the failure rate on the P power exam is much higher than the FE electrical and computer exam. After passing the P power exam, you will still have to meet some of the other requirements in order to become a PE. And these requirements include four to five years of experience depending on which state you're applying for, you will also have to provide references. Again, the number of references that you have to provide from other PEs, it changes from one state to another state. You will have to get your credential evaluation done and you will also have to pass a security clearance. Now, if you're an internationally trained engineer or even a US graduate with non-ABET accredited university, then my recommendation is to get your credential evaluation process started 
as soon as possible. It's a fairly simple, straightforward process and NCS has really made it quite easy. All you need to do is to visit their website www.ncs.org. The difficult part of this process is, especially if you're internationally trained, is to get your transcripts, get them arranged to be sent directly to NCS and they have all of the steps laid out. You may have to get the translations done and if your university is not signed up with electronic transmission or electronically requesting the transcripts, then you will have to do some legwork in order to get the transcripts to the right place for the evaluation to get started. The evaluation process is fairly streamlined, but you need to jump on it sooner rather than later. A lot of states actually let you take the FE electrical and computer exam or the FE exam in general without getting the credential evaluation done. And if you are busy and want to focus just on exam preparation, it's fine, you can leave it until you're about to prepare for the PE power exam, but don't put it off too long because you don't want to be in a situation where you've passed both exams and now the holdup is only in terms of credential evaluation. You also don't want to experience any surprises last minute. If you are an internationally trained engineer, you have to remember that there's a strong chance that you might have deficiencies in your curriculum, which is fine because there are plenty of options. And I'll do another video in which I'll explain you how you can go about addressing those deficiencies. But the point is that the sooner you get to know about what your deficiencies are and how many courses or how many exams you'll have to take in order to bring your degree up to the same level as they require, it will give you an outline of the steps that you need to take and you will be better prepared. Over the years, I've helped tons of engineers prepare for and pass FE electrical and computer exam as well as the PE power exam in the first attempt. You can check out tons of success stories on my YouTube channel. There's an entire variety of different scenarios and some of those scenarios might resonate with you. Whether you are a new graduate, you have five years of experience, 10 years of experience, 15 years of experience, 20, even 30 plus years of experience in the industry and you want to pursue this from scratch, you will find success stories on my YouTube channel. Even if you have a non-electrical background, if you have a mechanical background, chemical background, petrochemical background, software background, computer background, you'll find success stories in all of these domains. And if you're an internationally trained engineer, I've helped several internationally trained engineers pass these exams, get their P licenses, and really kick off their career in the US as professional engineers. So remember, your journey as an internationally trained engineer in the US is full of potential. With right preparation and guidance, the PE license is within your reach. And this license can be a game changer for your future career in the US. For more insights and guidance, please subscribe to this channel. And if you're interested in preparing for the FE electrical or PE power exam, then please visit my website, www.studyforfe.com, where you can learn about my FE electrical and PE power exam preparation programs. Thanks for your time, and hopefully you found this video helpful. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of these exams, then click here to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.